for some Python on hardware. Blinka, 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 blinka. So in addition to all this machine learning stuff that we've been doing lately, we have a lot of other things. First up, 6,000 thanks. Thank you so much, everybody. We are now up to 6,000 subscribers on Python on microcontrollers. Wow. That, that's a lot. This is our fastest growing newsletter that we have right and now. And it's chock full. I love it. Yeah. I send stuff. I contribute stuff. I read it. Yeah. It's like a snake eating its own tail. <laughs> uh, Hackspace Magazine, Circuit Python 410 got 10 out of 10 for speed for its operating system, which is crazy because we definitely do not focus on making sure Circuit Python is the fastest bare metalist, you know, down, you know, assembly. You know, it's not that. It's it's, yeah. it's ease of use. However, we did a ton of extra work on it, and now it's. Um, three to five times faster, depending on what you're doing. Yep, and so, its graphics are also much faster. Yep. Um, and you know, we're not sure we're gonna get another big speed up for a bit. We're adding more capabilities, but that's how it goes, a cycle of adding yeah. uh, functionality and then adding in, updates. In fact, I wanna show, this is one of the projects I've been working on. So we'll talk about some of these things later with um, some of the work that Nicholas is doing. But this is my um, PyPortal HyperCard-like demo. And it displays um, a hypercard-like experience, and and that's kind of what we wanted. And let me try to focus in on a little bit here. That's pretty good. So you can see it has buttons. This is all generated out of a JSON file, and uh, bing. and so you can have little buttons. And I'm going to go through this little interactive demo. Let me uh, try to get it in focus. There we go. I don't know why it keeps coming out. I'm going to put it there. There it is. So that screen redraw now is nearly instant. Yeah, much faster. And you can go through this little interactive fiction game. But Here. you get the point. And that's all generated live and dynamically. Yeah, so that's and it's much, faster. it's much, much faster with the graphics okay. and the text. I'll get Pete back here. OK. All right, so uh, that is the demo for this. Pete, while you were gone, we were talking about CircuitPython 4. Just got 10 out of 10 for its speed increases. Awesome. First, first time we've, you know, we've got 10 out of 10 for the speed of something, <laughs> which is really good. Um, and uh, that was in the latest issue of Hackspace Magazine. Katni and Scott did an Embedded FM podcast. So if you're an Embedded FM fam, fan, check that out. CircuitPython Day is 8-8. So Coming up. Weeks from now. Yep, we have a lot of things going on. There is an event in New York City, and there's also an event in India. Here's the poster for it. It is at the uh, Technical University for Women, and it's at James, uh, sorry, it's the Delhi Technical University for Women. Yep. And we have the address and information and more, and I have a lot of cool demos and CircuitPython stuff going on. Um, one little bug that came up that we think uh, Apple now fixed, yay. The latest version of iOS 13, beta does no it no longer deletes all the files off our Yay. drives yeah so. so you can see the files <laughs> yeah but right now there's no apps that can let you access the files because they just don't exist yet but so. we can open it up so we're very close to being able to do opening and saving python files over a device from an ios device mm. to a circuit python device so that's very exciting cool. uh, next up if you want to get your board and have it join the 67 other boards that runs CircuitPython. It's a party. It's a party. Um, and it'll show up on circuitpython.org slash downloads, and you'll be, maybe you'll be board 68. Um, we have a guide on that. We have a guide now. There is a new series of uh, CircuitPython libraries that now work with QUIC. So if you use QUIC from SparkFun, there's now a CircuitPython library that makes it work with the screens. This is kind of neat. Someone got a lizard, and when you get one of these types of lizard, you need to keep track of all the different things about the lizard. Here is an Adafruit Pi portal, and this is the name of the lizard it, goose. I guess the lizard is named Goose because it's not monitoring it, goose. It's a goose monitor. It's it's monitoring a lizard called Goose. Yeah, <laughs> and so this is using uh, Pi portal Python. It's toasty. It's like up to 98 degrees. Yep. Toasty lizards. We had a follow-up for the hot air balloon team. Um, Circuit Python was in space, but it's also in low al altitude. Uh, sometimes now, and this is Circuit Python on high altitude ballooning, and this is from. Let me make sure I get this right because it's a specific school here. It is um, the 
Department of Aerospace Engineering at Iowa State University. And it's part of the Make to Innovate, Make M2I program. Mm. And this is the High Altitude Balloon Experiments and Technology. And Matt sent this in. So they're using this. They're mostly using CircuitPython because they need to maintain it longer than just all the C code they were, they were using. Nice. Um, someone made a Bitcoin tracker using <laughs> Circuit CircuitPython and PyPortal. That was kind of cool. There's like Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash. So I guess it's all, a lot. The all the different Bitcoins. Yeah. Um, the NVIDIA Jetson, Pete, you're probably familiar with this yeah. because it's uh, optimized for a lot of machine learning. They use Circuit uh, Python Blinka, which is our Linuxy Circuit Python. So you can put Circuit Python on a microcontroller, or you can put it on Linux, and it's just easier. Everything just works. Yep. So kind of like if you do something with TensorFlow, you can probably do it in lots of different places. This is a really cool board. It's a string car, M0 Express. Um, this is now past all its tests, so you'll probably see it soon. It's one of those little cars that go on a string. But it's it's just feather that just does that. Has yeah. one job. Circuit Python power. String car. This is a Arduino Nano drop-in replacement using the SAM21, uh, the SAMD21, and it runs Circuit Python. Here's Blinka. Scott Halselman was here on Saturday, and we posted up the video that night. He showed all of his artificial pancreas stuff. And, of course, uh, a lot of folks know his work from the Pi Portal project that he did that showed his live glucose uh, measurements on a Pi Portal using CircuitPython. Then we had a giant board um, update. This is a power consumption post on Crowd Supply. If you're curious about the uh, latest with the giant board by Grow Boards, check that out. Radmir posted up a recap of EuroPython and all the games and things that you can play with um, it's Pew Pew is the name of the yep. device. And then the new games are now posted up as well. So if yeah. you're at your I think Python, it's like a bicolor LED matrix, really yeah. truck LED matrix, and you can, uh, yeah, make simple but fun games with it. And it's restricted, but that's actually kind of a nice thing because you, you won't be able to make too complicated games. You have to keep them simple. Um, this is a screenshot from a video. Nicholas, who is the author of Moo, did a Python hypercard experiment. And this is using the thing I just showed a couple minutes ago, um, reading and writing to a JSON file that allow you to do interactive fiction and Python your own adventure games. Don't call them choose your own adventure. It's someone else's trademark. And um, you can build stuff like this. And we got inspired by, if you grew up on HyperCard, um, this is me putting the HyperCard image on a bike portal. So I'm like, hey, we're, the screen size is looking pretty good. And we also just saw the movie um, General Magic and we have a general magic device here, a magic cap device. It's like, okay, we're getting really close to being able to do these things. Uh, microcontrollers are now able to do this stuff that the, the top of the line stuff did, just did a few years ago. And then we have some more things that we're doing with cursors so you can make UIs and more inside of CircuitPython. And then- It's an OLED party. Yeah, and then OLED, OLED, OLED. OLED Scott's working on this stuff. Um, he showed getting them, them going. Show it's slowly making its way into mainline. So yep. uh, if you've been wanting to use OLED displays with CircuitPython and have them work with Display.io, which is great because you can do bitmaps and animations and sprites and text and fonts. That is coming very soon. And then we had a little bit about Circuit Playground, Blue Fruit Express, and this uses the Nordic NRF uh, 52840. Um, we're probably going to try to get TensorFlow running on that. I don't see why not. It's a Cortex M4 and it's actually yeah. got tons of RAM on it. Yeah. And this is um, going to be our, our wireless Bluetooth version of our very popular Circuit Playground Express. In case you're wondering what the range is, it's at least 40 feet. Yeah. It's yeah. It's it's a, it's across Washington Square Park. This and then I ran out of park. <laughs> we ran out of park. Yeah. And then this weekend, Katni is uh, keynoting at uh, Pi, Ohio. Pi Ohio. So check that out. That's coming up this Saturday. And as always, um, if you're interested in learning Circuit Python, Code Academy still has the Circuit Python course. That is the Python on Hardware News this week. Blinka, blinka, blinka. All right. <laughs>